Okay, okay. So <clears throat> this is where we'll start the service now. Complete fundamentals, and I think I you have already seen uh, that part, the course content which we are going to cover here. Right? Uh, we have already talked about it. The basic course content we had, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'll just go through it once, once again, so just to give you a quick overview of that. So let me share my screen quickly. Can you see my screen? I guess I'll. Right, okay. So, so if you see this, right, so this is all service now system administration course content, and it is a published course content. It is not something I have designed uh, for myself, right? So the only exceptional part which I am covering as part of the syllabus is, is this part, which is marked in yellow. So in generally in your administration training, you don't cover these service now mobile apps, ITS and basics, service now ITS and problem change request service portal. So all of that you don't cover. So you generally will cover all these other topics also, and we will cover this piece of also as a part of the training. Yeah. Now, now I'll tell you how, how to look for the resources on the internet also. So this is how we will start talking about it. The first thing you need to understand uh, overall that what is service now, first of all, right? I'll tell you which uh, resources I'm, I'm taking from. So I'm not preparing my own content here because I just want you to refer to the public and which is already there on service resources so that would be updated all the time so whenever you want to refer it you can always refer it i'll tell you where from where did i reach to this stage i'll come to that part also but just to tell you the very basics of it uh, the very basics of it service now generally people consider that as an itsm tool and in the market if you go and you tell somebody that i have a service now guy and he'll understand okay you are the ticketing guy right who raises incidents problems changes and requests that is that is kind that has been the kind of image service now started with but now it is a big platform and when i say platform it is no more a tool because it offers you so many functionalities in terms of digitizing your workflows in terms of automating the whole business process because they have come up with a lot of products a lot of solutions already and they are that is why they are number one in the gartner list of uh, itsm and itom world right why they have developed we started the journey from the itsm world which is it service management i'll, I'll come to that part a little later but what I'm trying to tell you is this is a clear misnomer where people understand that the service now is more of a ticketing tool. That is a very, very, I would say, a very small subset of the capabilities of service now. That is where it started its journey in terms of ITSM, IT service management, where they started with ticketing part. But now they have completely grown into a full flown solution, full fledged solution, where they call themselves as application platform as a service. There is one thing is one thing you call it as platform as a service. So have you heard of these terms, platform as a service, software as a service, SaaS, PaaS? Have you have you come across these terms in, in your past? Yes, I've heard of these things like okay. Yes. You have some idea around it? What, what is platform as a service? What, what is application platform as a service? Actually, I don't have idea, but I mean I just have heard these terms, but I haven't I mean I don't know what these are. Fair enough, fair enough. So let me let me come to that part. When I say application platform, so generally when you say platform as a service, which means that they are giving, for example, Amazon is there, right? It offers you a platform and now on the platform, you can post your applications, whatever you want. It's completely up to you. Now in this case, and when you have software as a service, which means a company sells its software, you just use it, you use the licensing, and then you start using it for your day-to-day -day operations. But this is where it calls, service now calls themselves as application platform as a service, which means they have already hosted few applications on their platforms, which you can use, which you can tailor customize as per your business requirement. So it is a big platform under which they offer you multiple applications, multiple products, and you can configure them, customize them as per your needs, and you can use them. That is why they go and they also give you a platform. So that is why it is not only application as a service, it is also application plus platform as a service, wherein they offer you the platform on the cloud side as well as they have already hosted some applications. That is why it is called as application platform as a service. Does that, does that make sense, sense to you? Yes. Great. Great. So the short form is a pass. So otherwise had it been platform as a service, the short form could have been pass. Now in this case, it is application platform as a service. That is why they call them as 
a pair. That means it is a so it is a cloud computing model. So they have already hosted everything on the cloud and they have done the infrastructure provisioning, they've done everything which is required to run, develop, and manage your applications. And the best part about ServiceNow is that they've standardized a lot of processes, a lot of business, for example, HR, legal, uh, IT service management, IT operations management, governance, risk and compliance. There are a lot of, lot of functionalities and products which I will talk about in this whole, whole thing, right? The only point I am trying to make clear to you is that first of all, we should not understand ServiceNow as a normal ticketing tool. It is much more than that. It is a platform itself and which offers you multiple capabilities. And this course about ServiceNow fundamentals that covers the platform level features. Okay. So if you see that syllabus, right, uh, the, all of these things, they're actually the part of platform, which means irrespective of the application or product you are using in service now, these things remain constant. All of these things are constant. What you use IT service management, you use IT operations management, or whatever you want to use going forward, applications, whatever products you want to use to service now, all these things remain constant except the yellow part. And that is where I told you this is the USP the training that generally the part of fundamentals training, they do not cover the IT because ITSM, which is also called as IT service management, it is a product in itself by service now. And all of these replications in that product. Right. That is why, uh, which means I'm covering some part of one of the products, which is quite popular in service now from where they've started their journey. Okay. Otherwise, all of these things, whatever you see here, uh, user interface, branding, list and filters, forms, task management, notifications, reporting, all of these can be reused across their multiple products. And that is why they're called as now platform features. When you say service now, they have called they have launched a platform called Now Platform, which caters to all these things, all these all these particular items which I just talked about, right? I'll tell you how do you. So generally, I'm just trying to enable you right now that how do you source yourself on service now? And if, for example, there is no help, how do you want to go forward about it, right? The so first thing is the officially service now site. Sorry, open that site. Yeah. So if I this is ServiceNow official site. And if I go to uh, their home, uh, right, uh, which is ServiceNow. So this is their official website, right? Uh, which is where you're, you have the first interface with ServiceNow that how, how does ServiceNow work, right? Now, if you see the tagline, the tagline is very, uh, the world works with ServiceNow. This is, a, this is the latest tagline they've introduced. Earlier, there was something else, uh, which means the reason they have this tagline is because uh, as of today, most of, the Fortune 500 companies or big organizations uh, for their IT service management, for their IT operations management, HR service delivery, all of those things they have started using service now quite a lot. And that is why it has gained a lot of recognition in the market recently. Okay. So let me tell you about the resources by which you learn service now generally. And these are the standard things. These are very, and you can always register with your own ID. So serviceon.com is the first thing. And here you learn about the important thing is you learn about these products. And this is where I'll give you some idea what all ServiceNow can do at a very high level. These are specified products. You might not need to work on all of them. And always generally it is, it is you know, either you're working on this or you're working on this or you're working on this, which means you can understand that this is so huge that you cannot get expertise immediately on all the other modules. I mean, over a period of time, once you gain experience and knowledge, you tend to go from one to another, and, and so on. Right? That is what, for example, I do uh, as an architect. I have to learn multiple modules. But right now, yeah, I have kind of done two or three, four here, right? Not everything. But then uh, as a part of the syllabus, we don't need to cover everything. As I said, these are specific products based on the specific needs, right? So your organization will buy either ID service management or a combination of ID service management operations. Those are kind of the kind of mesh shorts gradually. At first, they go for this. This is the first thing which any company goes for service now, to be honest. Whenever somebody is to service now, the first thing they do is IT service management. That is why, if you, if you remember, that is why I've covered this in the syllabus also. Right? Because this is the very first thing with service now. People uh, which do have those have service now, which you generally understand it is a ticketing tool. So this ticketing part happens here, but then there is a lot more than ticketing, even in this version of IT service management, which is quite, quite important. Okay. So the reason I am showing you this 
I would have created PPT, but then the PPT will stay outdated in such some, some point of time because they keep on upgrading their things. They keep on increasing the product line. So that is why this is the best place where you understand what is service town, what does it offer as a product? Okay, so far so good. Yes. Uh, you, uh, uh, yeah. Just have a question. Yeah. Um, actually, we just need some data, right? Like uh, to show that filters and all. So of course, so you, I, I'll come to all that part. Don't worry. I mean, by today end of day, you will understand how to use service now at least. At, at a very fancy level, at a very initial level, not of course about applications and products, but at least how do you enable yourself and get an instance for service now? I'll talk talk about all that. How do I get access to this service now? Web, this website is public, right? So everything, okay. So reason I am sharing you all of this is, first of all, it enables you to do things yourself, right? You're not dependent on anybody. Second thing is that all of this is free of cost. You can always go in, you can always uh, learn, you can always practice, you can do all, all of that. So I'll come to all that part. How do you enable uh, yourself to, to get access to all these resources in some time? Yeah. So don't worry about that. Yeah. So Service.com, for example, if you want to open it right now on your web, on your machine and you open service.com, this is exactly the same interface you're going to look at. You can try that out right now. There is, it's a public web website, right? It's not something which I have customized for myself as such. That is why I'm telling you that, for example, if I had prepared a PPT, then these things would become outdated in a certain amount of time because every six months they have a release. And the moment they have a release, they add some other new functionality here all the time. Right? So that is why I'm taking you to the most authenticated sources available free of cost publicly online. Yeah? So whenever you want to see service now, you should always come here and see what are the products they offer. So before going to products, you have to understand there are four types of things the work, four types of workflows they engage themselves into. One is this IT workflows, which means this is completely uh, for the IT department of a particular organization. <clears throat> so all of these, what you see here, I'm not going into each and every detail right now because that is a very huge platform as such, but I'm just telling you how to look for things and just a very high level of idea that, okay, what kind of products, Service management is one thing. Uh, I mean, all these incidents, problems, changes, requests, you might've heard of these terminologies, right? Incidents, yeah, yeah. changes. So all of these happen here. There are, as I said, there are some additions to it in terms of the, the product intelligence, the AI ML capabilities. We'll not go into that right now because our focus is to learn the fundamentals, not to learn the advanced production service. Now that will come a little later in the game. Then your second thing is IT operations management. When I see IT operations management, I'm talking about uh, the entire <clears throat> operation, for example, there you are monitoring your infrastructure, right? Now, first of all, how do you discover infrastructure? How do you monitor that? And how do you create events of those? Uh, and then how do you take on that? So all of this part is covered. And as I said, I'm not going to much detail because right now you're not aware of even IT some basics. You do not understand what event is versus what an incident is, right? So I'm not going much into that information. I'm just telling you, these are four spaces you would say it workflows employee workflows customer workflows, and creator workflows so it workflows are predominantly used by the it department of any organization and this is where they offer these multiple products it service management or just just be familiar with the names right now you don't need to go much into the details right now okay because this is the first session we don't want to over bombard you uh, with a lot of information i'm just telling you this is how you look at things and this is these are the kind of products they offer uh, to the to the customers. Yeah, service management, operations management, business management, asset management. Then you have DevOps. Then you have security operations, governance, risk and compliance. Telecom. This is a new thing which they have launched recently, especially for telecom world. So service operations combination of the basic layer of service management and operations management, and then they have added the flavor of telecom there, right? And then operational technology management. So these are these are the standard workflows they have offered. I would say products they have offered for IT workflows. Similarly, for employee workflows, these are all things which generally an employee uses in an organization. HR service delivery, for example, <clears throat> you want to request letter from HR, right? Uh, any any information you need from HR, any task you need from HR. Okay, uh, give me a salary. I have a problem with my salary, compensation, all that stuff. All of that goes into this part. 
and that is why they call them as employee workforce because they are not used directly by IT teams. They are used by the end users, right? And they are used by the HR team. For example, in this case, the HR team will be service provider, right? And the end users will be you guys. For example, in your case, if you talk to your HR department, you need an interface to talk to them to raise tickets, to raise the concerns, to raise some issues, right? So that interface is given by this HR service delivery platform product. And then there are multiple capabilities inside it. I will not go much into that. Just, just a very high level knowledge management case. I mean, when you when you want to report any issue with HR, this is where you raise a case. Employee center, I mean, all, all those basic things which you need for your day-to-day -day operations from HR, this is where employee service center comes into play. Uh, this is enterprise onboarding. So whenever new people join the organization, this is where uh, that, that, that thing comes into play. This is journey management. I mean, right from uh, procuring a resource and then, you know, uh, onboard, them to, onboard them into system and then later on their BAU, later to BAU and then the resignation also. So all of the end-to-end -end journey for employee is, is and this is an application which they use for better interfaces, better intuitive interfaces. That is the whole purpose. But again, as I said, I'll not go much into those details. I'm just telling you the flavor right now that what all areas do they offer their expertise in? So this is one. Second is workplace service delivery, right? So any workplace level information facilities or all those things can be handled here. Then you have legal service delivery. So you have those legal services for the enterprise. This is where they can use this module to automate the entire flow. So, so you have to understand one thing here, Rakesh, that if you see the, the concept of service now, if you see what they are trying to achieve, then the overall fundamental overall concept is drag. They are trying to automate any business processes or any IT processes. I mean, that is the whole fundamental behind it. So whatever products they are coming up with, or they have come up with, they are all aligned to the same vision that you have to automate the journey. You have to optimize the journey. That is where you actually make things quite efficient, right? And they have, a lot of new technologies like mobile, they have excellent uh, portals and everything. So that that adds up to that experience of automi automation and optimization of any journey. Now, this is where, as I said, employee workflows, their procurement management also, their workplace suit. You don't need to worry about them right now. You just need to, this is just a familiarity in terms of, uh, this is about the customer workflows. That was, so we talked about IT workflows where most of the time IT teams are engaged with. Then you have employee workforce where most of the times employee uh, do engage with that particular uh, product. But here you have customer workflows. When I say customer workflows, you have a concept of customer service management. This is a very big uh, thing in the market. I can tell you maybe uh, tomorrow by preparing Excel sheet telling you these are the most important ones which are in the market today because they have a lot of offerings. Not everything is so popular, not everything is so ingrained in the system right now. But however, few of them, for example, as I was talking about IT service management, IT operations management, HR service delivery. These are very, very standard and quite common and popular workflows which industry is using today. So wherever, whenever you get an opportunity to work on service now, most probably these will be the interfaces you have to work upon. Okay. And they have courses for everything, right? For example, they have a specific course for this. They have a specific course for this. So it depends on the situation in which project have you been onboarded? What are the modules or products they are working on? And then gradually, because see, nobody can learn everything at, at quickly, right? I mean, it takes time to learn things, obviously, right? And when that is the case, then you have to take your journey gradually, one by one, one by one. Then only you can learn things, become expert in one of the areas, once you have gained expertise, you move forward to the next one. But then, as I said, I'll tell you which of them are most important popular ones. Then maybe, you know, I can create a kind of a prioritization chart for you that these are all P1 modules, these are all P2 modules, and these are all P3 modules. Okay. Is that making sense to you so far? Okay. Yes. Perfect. So this one, uh, I can tell you, Prime Faces, this is one of the one of the most common uh, modules they use, customer service management. And this is where the customers interact with the uh, with the business enterprises service management this is more about you know when you have people on field who go to the customers places and actually provision things physically right all that kind of stuff for example 
I have a dishwasher at my place. Somebody has to come physically. Nobody can fix my dishwasher online or provision it online, right? It has to be done physically. There are things which have to be done physically. So for those kind of stuff where you have to go to the field and do the provisioning, do the config configuration, troubleshooting, repair, all of that uh, physically, all of that is where you use field service management. And your financial service operations or your front office, middle office, back, any, any financial services, any sector, right? As if you remember, I was talking, talking about this telecommunication service management. This is also one of the areas. Order management, telecommunication. These are very recently ones. So these three, four, they're very recent uh, products. So they're not that mature as of today. But however, uh, as, as I told you, service now has released every six months. So whatever products they have matured already, they are already matured. For example, IT service management, IT operations management, HRSG, most of them have reached a level of maturity. But these are the new products for which they are maturing themselves. Uh, so they are their agile mode of releases, iterative mode of releases, wherein they're talking about these new products. And then you have these creator workflows. Now, when I say creator workflows, this is very interesting. This is primarily for developers because the name itself suggests creator. And when I say the word creator, it simply means that somebody who can create something on service now. Now this is all about creating the custom apps on service now. So for example, whatever products you have seen here, they are clearly established in terms of the product line and they are already offered by service now. So you just do some kind of configuration customization in these cases, in all these cases. Whatever products are there, you just do a basic level of customization, sorry, and configuration, right? But in this case of creator workflows, this is purely on your creativity. This is purely on business requirements. This is pure custom application which you're creating from scratch. There is nothing of that thought in service now. It is just giving you a platform in that case. So the reason they're giving you, for example, you have a different business need which you cannot fulfill by using their products which are already offered, right? The ones which we have already covered in ID workflows, employee workflows, customer workflows. So if you have, you cannot meet your business needs with those products, this is where the things come into play, wherein you can always create your own applications on service now because it offers you a very flexible platform, a very scalable platform, and you can reuse a lot of things. So if you remember, I was talking about uh, all of these things, right? So all of these things are actually universal to service now, as I said. They are part of now platform. And when you say now platform, now platform is not specific to a product. It is irrespective of the product you want to use. You want to use service management, operation management, SR service delivery, whatever. All of these things will remain constant in those platforms. So with the power of all these scalable things which you see here, you can always create a new application right from scratch. And this is where they're making things easier for us right now. They have this concept of app engine. Now, this is how the app engine looks like, uh, just to give you a very, this is app engine studio. Uh, we'll come to that point because it is not part of slavery as such. So, uh, but then the idea is that from here, you create a complete new application for the enterprise. This is why they call them as creator workforce. And then you have this integration hub. This integration hub talks about they have already a lot of things on service now store, a lot of integrations available with a lot of products. So because I'll come to that part. So here you can use your integration knowledge to use to integrate multiple systems to achieve something out of it. And then this is service now store and service now store. Uh, it has a lot of applications uh, which are already pre-published by different vendors, different partners of service now. And this is where they can always Talk to uh, they, you can always use those applications for other customers also if they have the same business case so all of those things are same then you can always go and go to service now app store and you can actually look at those applications and use it for yourself so the idea which i was trying to tell you uh Mukesh, was these are different workflows it workflows employee workflows customer workflows creator workflows and these are different products and in this case, you can build your own products depending on your business need because they give you a very flexible and sustainable platform on which you can always do that. But that was about the very first interface of ServiceNow, which is called as ServiceNow.com, the website of ServiceNow. Okay. Do you have any questions at a very, see, we are not going to detail of all these things because that will be a very long course in that case. And we don't need to do that. 
this is just and to be honest in in the certified system admission course they don't even go and talk, talk about all these things because you this is the first time you are understanding service now so i just want to create that impression in your mind that what is service now what are the capabilities of service now what what are different products they offer what are the different product lines do they have and do we, can you actually create new applications all of all of for yourself right that is why if you remember they call themselves as application platform as a service right because you can yeah yeah those the applications which are already there and you can create your new applications also so that was the first interface service now second interface service now which you have to do yourself is you can do it right now open this site called developer.servicenow.com this is where you have to register with your email id and you will get a personal development instance they call it as pdi and i say pdi which means personal development instance and the reason and this is one of the best offerings from service now site for any anybody, anybody who wants to learn service now and the reason is very simple because it gives you the complete platform i can do anything here whatever we are learning we are going to learn in these next 20 days all of those things can be practiced here and this is also the best practice that whenever you want to do any thing in service now you should first try it in your pdi so henceforth i'll be calling it as pdi personal development so this is my pdi because i have activated from here i have i have registered here so maybe not right now but after this uh, session what you can do is you can go to developer.servicenow.com okay and okay. you register there and you request a pdi once you request a pdi then you can you can see a lot of things here you can activate plugins you can release your instance no, don't go into much of these things right now because these are not so much useful for you at this point of time and you can upgrade your instance right so there are a lot of things you can do with this pdi thing but then the idea i am trying to tell you is this is your start of the journey beginning of the journey if you do not have this then you cannot actually grasp everything as it is you cannot practice everything as it is so this is where they give form to do the practice as well okay so whatever you want for example i wanted to show you incident this is how the incident looks like this is this is the incident module incident application these are all modules in fact that to create new assign to me we will not go into much details because that will cover in different sessions but what i'm telling you that all those features which we talked about uh they are here and this is where you do the practice now interesting part right so whatever whatever we discussed here in terms of not everything is by default there in your instance when you request the instance for the first time you will have very basic id service management okay but if you want to practice for example you want to learn id operations management tomorrow then there are plugins which you need to activate from here so you see this you see this button called activate plugin is for example if i uh -huh. here and if i want to activate any plugin i can search something like you know you can see this cloud management there are so many plugins here so many plugins i can activate this right so whatever feature and functionality i want to practice for so that is why they always tell you that go one by one do not try to learn everything at just one go because then you will not be able to consume it you will not be able to retain it and then you will not be able to become an expert in it so as i said the most common feature or product which every customer uses who has service now is it service management and that is why i have included that in my course at a very basic level that okay what how does service now it sm work what are what is an incident problem change request how do you raise them so we will cover that part also okay so that is something which you will be needing in any organization whenever you go for service now kind of roles does that make sense to you yes great have you written down this website yeah i'll actually check this website pehle before itself and uh, after going here how do we open that open what the next tab which you have shown this one right huh. yeah yeah so so okay so when you are here for example you can see the start building button the moment 
click on start building button, it opens this interface to me. And this is where the entire ServiceNow knowledge lies. This is where you do everything in ServiceNow. This is the ServiceNow interface, oh. to be honest. The user interface, the, the admin interface, by which you can become administrator, you can you will learn to do things here. Right? So this is the place where you do everything. So this button called start building is a button by which you reach this stage. Okay. Make sense? No. Yeah. So this is first thing we learned is to just note down these points for yourself, for your own journey. You can make your notes, right? Uh, that is not a problem. It is just about the way you understand things, right? Uh, I am a different person. You are a different person. So I'll let you point down the things, not the detailed notes, because if anyways, you are going to have this video recording with you, right? So it is not a very detailed note which you have to write there. All you have to understand is go to service.com, go to product section and see these products. This is the service now offering. Now, second thing you need to understand is go to developer.service.com, register yourself, request. So here itself, when you register, you'll get, a, you'll get an option here, request PDI, a request an instance. For example, you're looking at it here, refresh instance, upgrade instance, here you'll see request instance. And when you request instance, go for the latest version. So in this case, right now, the latest version is San Diego. So you can uh, opt for San Diego. They'll give you options. Okay, which one do you want to uh, request? San Diego, Rome, Quebec, Paris. You can go for San Diego because it is the latest one. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so we talked about second thing, developer.service.com, right? Now, as I'm saying, I'm telling you, how do you enable yourself, right? Uh, for example, tomorrow you don't have any, any support for you, then how do you want to navigate to things? Third thing, uh, I think we have talked about it already, that once you click on start this PDI, that is why you do it. The fourth thing is nowlearning.com. This is where I was telling you, right, that I'll tell you from where did I reach to this area, and I'm showing you this official definition of now, now platform. Okay, mm -hmm. the official definition. People can write in the PPT, uh, they, they can write right, or they can want to comment on that part, but then the point I'm going to make it, this is the most authenticated source of service on learning. Now learning.servicenow.com. Now, sometimes uh, you might don't want to, for example, you would have learned service now even from here, but then this is not very interactive in nature, right? And this is where you need somebody to navigate you, somebody to guide you, somebody to mentor you to understand things, how, how do they work, right? Otherwise, uh, People also learn from this platform. This is also a platform which offers you now learning free of cost. There is no cost to it, right? So this is the third thing. Now learning dot service now dot com. Just looking at it, if I can ping you in chat. So first of all, we talked talk about service now dot com. Then we talked about developer.servicenow.com. Then we talked about now learning.servicenow. This is where you just register yourself. For example, see, you cannot take training for every, because ServiceNow is very huge. As I, if you remember, I was showing you all those products, right? Now, every single product has a course behind it. Every single product has to be learned individually. Now, if you start training for every single product, it will be very difficult for you to manage, right? So whatever product mm -hmm. thing is required for your day-to-day -day operations, whatever you're going to work on in your office, you just need to use that particular uh, product and you just need to learn that particular product. Now, I'll tell you how do you navigate from here. Now, this was, so this is a course called Service for Fundamentals. This is the actual course we are actually doing right now. But we are not doing it from here. Uh, I, I'll refer this sometimes just to show you the visuals, to show you uh, the authenticated content somewhere. But if you see this content, service now fundamentals, this is an, exactly this particular content. And this is where whoever is starting the service now journey, they have to go through this particular course for the very first time. So you can see this, right? This course is almost 15 hour course overall. But then if you start doing it, then yeah, it will take some time. And it has uh, it has all that information that what you need 
and based on that course only i have designed my syllabus which means okay. going through the authentication uh, course structure so it's not nothing uh, which i have customized except this yellow part that i talked about already right? they don't cover this part uh, in this course because they have a different uh, journey for that particular course now the best part is you can come to home uh, you can also if you want to enroll for certifications for example if you want to i would suggest to you if you want to go uh, into this particular journey of service now and you want to become an administrator then do this course of csa certified system administrator and this course you can do once you complete this learning so for example once you've learned from me right you've understood everything now you just need to go through quickly of this course and click 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 get a voucher now if you are in a company who sponsors a certification then you might get a free of cost just exam and, and certification right if you want to do it yourself it might be uh, you might need to pay some money but i think for the first one i think if you complete this course you get a voucher and you can use this voucher within a certain amount of time and you can actually uh, give the examination and examination is also online we'll talk about that part after the end of the course because of course you're not going to do it today it is going to be a long time there are a lot of options which you so what i'm trying to say is all the certifications actually are here so all the certification pass and service now for all those products that you talked about and there certification for different kind of personas also i i mean to say if you're a developer you have a different certification path if you're an architect you have a different certification path if you are a implementer you have a different certification path if you are a business analyst or a business process consultant you need a different certification path however for all of them there is one thing which is common which is this course okay so what i'm trying to say whatever content i have taken is actually from this course we'll just go through the content one by one we'll practice everything in this sense i'll guide you with everything whatever is required how 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 things work and later on if you plan to give exam okay if you plan to give exam for certified system administrator then you should complete this course online here just click next next just see those things and then you are all set Give the exam. Any questions, Mukesh? Uh, no, no, all good. And I'll also uh, refer to this video once again today. Which video is it? I mean the video which I mean the class which we are the recording. Thing, right? Look, the recording. Yeah, yeah. So I will need some time to upload it on YouTube because uh, it will not be so quick. Uh, I may need some time by end of day today to do that because I, I won't I get here like this. So I'll give you the YouTube link, right? Uh, after I upload it there. Okay. You can watch it any any time you want. Okay. Yeah, sure. So the third thing you noticed, uh, third thing you have put down for yourself is the. Devil, sorry, now learning dot service now dot com. This is again that portal which you need for your learning in service now. So as I said, there are so many courses available. You can't learn everything from the one to one training. So because that requires a lot of time. So sometimes you want to learn just a very simple feature. For example, I just want to learn virtual chatbot. Right. So there are uh, go live training also. Uh, Or maybe if I want to learn customer service management, can you see this? There are so many courses here, right? So many courses. Fundamental, yeah. demand, live. So live training, of course, quite costly because they're all paid versions. Fundamentals are something you can always take, right? So there, will, there will be some free or paid training. So that uh, I cannot tell you right now because it depends on training. Training, but then. Whatever basics you need to learn, as I said, you just need to understand the fundamentals of this. Now, once you do this, second, you just need to uh, take the journey of ITSM because that is the first product and the most important product service now uses everywhere for all the customers. You just learn these two things first, and then you can start a journey. You can you can see how things look like, and then depending on the requirements, you can actually go for that particular learning. Okay, and the organization, if your organization is a partner of service now, then they offer a lot of other things also. so most of these learnings become free of cost if you are a partner of service now when i say you i mean i'm talking about your organization here right and you have uh, you have uh, enrolled in their partner portal then you are eligible to do lot of things make sense 
Yes. Right. And <clears throat> right. That's the most important thing. So whenever see, you don't want to see a video, you don't want to uh, enroll for training. Don't do anything. Just do one thing here. This is called docs dot service now. This is where most of the learning happens offline. You don't need you don't need to watch a video. See, every everybody has a different way of learning, right? Somebody loves to watch videos to learn. Somebody um, wants a document to read. So if you are a reader, for example, and if you just want to talk about a very small uh, part of service now, not uh, entire module as such, then I would prefer you go through docs.servicenow.com. This is the most powerful platform of service now, which is quite structured in nature. For example, I'll tell you how, how it looks structured in nature. When I say docs.servicenow.com, okay? It gives you the entire portfolio quickly. So first of all, they talk about these release notes and upgrades. So did you notice one thing? So right now, the latest release is San Diego, which is, which came just in the month of Feb, this month itself. Okay. And every six months, every release. Last release was so Rome and Quebec. So if you see, there's a very interesting pattern here. Orlando, Paris, Quebec, Rome, San Diego, O, P, Q, R, S. And before that also, they had Madrid, uh, they had London. I'll, I'll give you a slide. Maybe I think I can find it quickly on internet. I also got soon. Service now releases life cycle. Do you see this here, right? <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, they had Madrid, then New York, Orlando, Paris, Quebec, Rome, and then San Diego right now. So they have all these versions in the alphabetical format, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? And before Madrid, they had London, which was L. Then K was Kingston. Then you had J, it was Jakarta, right? F was Frankfurt. So I mean, what I'm trying to tell you is that based on the alphabets, they have named it on the cities, major cities of the uh, world, right? So, and they always tell you that this, this is... <clears throat> For example, let me just see. Um, they are very limited here. But then, yeah, so idea is that after San Diego, they'll have something which is started T with very big city name, right? And then something with U, something with V. You can see Kingston is also here, for example. So this is how their releases are there. And every two, six months, they have a release. Every six months, they have a release. So if you can see in, in one year, two releases. In this year, these two releases. In this year, these two releases. In 2022, San Diego is already released. After six months, they'll release something else. Is they have given the names also. So San Diego is something which they've launched right now. In Q3, they're going to launch Tokyo, which is T. Then Uta, U, V, Vancouver, Washington. So they've already told you these are numbers they want to release with. Okay. okay. So this is where you can, uh, but then, yeah, it is just for knowledge. Uh, it does not really, uh, but then, for example, if tomorrow somebody asks you, okay, what was the release what name called before, before uh, Madrid? then you are trying to recall it and you're not able to remember it. Then what you need to remember is that M before M comes L, right? And you then, if you have read it somewhere already that L was for London in this case, then you can always remember, okay, it was London. Somebody is asking you, what was the release name after New York? So after N it comes O and then see, you've read it somewhere that O was Orlando in service now. So you can see Orlando. This is where alphabetical knowledge helps you there. Everybody knows ABCD, right? So <laughs> there is nothing which you need to learn here. All you need to do is just see that, okay, what these are the names of different versions they had earlier. <clears throat> okay, so they have a roadmap clearly defined till 2024. After that, also they'll come to something new. In initial versions, they had something like uh, um, winter, summer, fall, something of that before that. And then they started with A. A was S Pen, Berlin. I'll, I'll tell you all those things later on. Uh, then, yeah. They are not very important things as such. All you need to understand is this is how they have released their versions. Okay. Yeah. 
just trying to see if I can find a full picture somewhere which can give you the entire thing. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. can you see it here, right? So, S Pen, Berlin, Calgary, Dublin, Eureka, Fuji, Geneva, Helsinki, Istanbul, Jakarta. <clears throat> this is something, uh, this is where I started my thing journey from Helsinki, Geneva, right? Seven years, as I told you. So, I, I have now reached to this stage. Now, they had called that earlier Stockholm, but it is not Stockholm, it is San Diego now. We know that, right? No. Otherwise, all the releases are covered here till A to R is all okay. After STUV, I told you already San Diego, Tokyo, Utah, Vancouver, and Washington. Right? Yes. Perfect. And every year they release two, <coughs> two uh, uh, inter uh, versions, right? Now I was talking about I'm talking about this doctor service now. This was about the release part that these are all releases. And then what is latest in that release? If you go here, you can always find out okay, what is latest in this release? San Diego. What's what's new about this release? They have the release notes also. Okay. Everything is here. <clears throat> now they also have YouTube uh, links. This is how the release notes are look like. Now something about if you want to learn about a particular product in service now, this is where you need to look for the doctor service now. And this is where they have all the products. Do you see it's here? So whatever list I was showing you there at that point of time, this is all you have here. Everything is here exactly. Okay. And you can go to any one of them. For example, now platform admission is something you have to work on. You will work on these two things as of today. And the th third thing will be for you is this. So these three are the very important artifacts for you. And this is what this is ID service management and all of these uh, products in ID service management they have, right? So we will talk about few of them as, I, as I've shown in the course content already, not everything, but this is where you have everything structured. It is just to explore things wherever you need to explore them. For example, as I said, this is the first thing you need to understand. Now platform administration. Because now platform is a platform name given to the entire service now platform irrespective of the product they are using. So all those topics in our learning and training, they are actually from here itself. Everything from here, right? And then tables, lists, fields, forms, reports, and everything is from here. As I said, these are three workflows. Fourth is not mentioned here because it is something quite new in terms of creator workflow. But this is, this is the workflow level information they've given. So <clears throat> this is the fourth source of truth, which is called as docs.service now. I think I've written it already in the chat, right? Yeah, this is the fourth. And the fifth one is, I mean, there are, there are multiple, but then at this stage, you don't need to learn everything. You, don't, you can't become an expert in, in a day, right? So I'm not giving you all those advanced sources, which they, uh, which they have for, for people like me who are already into the implementation, who have reached a certain level of maturity you will reach there at a certain point of time, but then still there is one more called as community or service model. This is also the last one, wherever, if you have any doubts in service now and you want to ask the community, you can always ask it here. <clears throat> and the best part here is okay, that everything works with single login. So I don't have to log in every time for different, different interfaces. With one single user ID, I can log into all these interfaces. That's the beauty of it. So as of now, I have logged in only with one ID and with this one ID, I have, I have logged in everywhere. Now learning or Dex for service now, whatever. You can see this, I look up the mention here, right? I have not logged in a few, it's all SSO. This is the third thing, which five, fifth thing. If you are clear about these five resources, then you are all sorted. But then you need to take them one by one. You just can't go through them and start learning immediately because that is where the role of a guide, a mentor, I mean, in this case, me, for example, for you, right, will come into play that what you should focus first, then you should go for this second, then you should go for, I'm just telling you at a very high level, these are different sources to understand about service now, very basic sources. There are advanced things as well, but I'll not go into much into that right now. So servicenow.com is the first thing, second is developer.servicenow.com, where you have, a, this is something you should do today itself. Because if you do it today, then by tomorrow, we can actually do the practice sessions. Okay. Okay. And you just need to create an ID, as I said, this one ID will be sufficient for all these five logins. And then if you have free time, if you want to learn something, you have confusion something about something, okay, this is something I'm not really clear about. Then go for these sources, docs.servicenow, now, community.servicenow, 
now learning dot service now you don't have to go through them right now immediately on this just complete this session first complete this training of 20 hours and then you can go to each one of them but however this is important to create a login id at least for this one and it can be reused everywhere yeah this is the best part about it. so was the today class useful to you okay yes did that give you some insight in service now did that clear some conceptions about service now what is it all about how do we, yes, yes. we move further into this space right okay when uh, tomorrow we'll start at the same time 10 to 11. yeah 10 to 11 yeah okay also uh one thing mm. this uh, let me just stop recording give me a second uh let me stop recording